And so I'll remind you again at the very end, you know, it says, uh, uh, lift up your praise and together we go proclaim his holy name, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Son, Jesus the Savior, the Healer, the one who is coming, the King. And then we got a ha-ha. And then, and I had really never seen the rest of it and never talked about the rest of it until about uh, uh, the Lord dealt with me. And he said, I want you to teach them. I want you to take a Sunday night, not a Sunday morning, and talk to them about Jesus being the king. And so he began to deal with me about it. And then I got into it a little bit. And he said, now go look at that utterance I gave you. And he said, there's more there than you, you stop and there's more there. And the reason it's at the very end is because it's where we're going to. There, there was a door there this morning, and he wants us to praise him. He wants us to rejoice in him. He wants us to be excited about him. There's not more, it's not so much of a what as there is a who. Amen. Who is he? He's the king of glory, the Lord strong and mighty. It's a revelation of the kingdom of God and the king himself. And there's, it's always been there, and there's always been some, but there's something for us that he wants to get to you right now. Because when Jesus is your king and you're serving in the kingdom of God, um, I think life on earth gets a whole lot better. You're just an ambassador. You're just passing through down here. Amen. Amen. And you have a king. Yes. You have a king. I know everybody gets all excited about things going on in our country and the countries of the world. And that's fine. And we live here and we want the highest and the best. But I already have a king. I already have one. I know who he is. That's my government. And where I'm from affects everything down here. And I'm just passing through down here. I'm just an ambassador. And the rules of heaven apply to me. And you. So let's look at Jesus. And then so he went on. All that, the king, the king, the king, the king. He said, and then the king, he comes in glory. He comes in power. He comes to show himself in this hour. Be glad and rejoice. Hallelujah. Woo-hoo. Hallelujah. Everybody say woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Woo. Oh, what a king. Oh, what a king. <laughs> We used to sing an older song around here. If I'd have thought about it, I would have made him do that one too. <laughs> about the king of glory. Glory to the king. Glory to the king. Amen. He's good. He's a king. Amen. John chapter 18. This is Jesus. And uh, he's before Pilate. So this is John 18, 33 through 38. Um, then Pilate entered into the judgment hall, John 13, 18, 33 through 38. Then Pilate entered the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said, him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered and said, Sayest thou this thing on, their, on yourself, or did someone tell you about it? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and thy chief priests have delivered you into me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. If Jesus is your king, you're not from here. You need to change the way you think. You may have a passport that says the United States of America and a driver's license that says Alabama on it, but you got to quit thinking you're from here. If it's going to work for you going forward. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would go ahead and fight. He's a king from somewhere else. And he had some other fighters. And he could have called just one. One angel could have taken care of this whole place. But he didn't. He could have called, the Bible says, 10,000. But he didn't. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight. That I should, Because remember, he told them, don't fight. Come on, Peter, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you had to put that ear back on. <laughs> my kingdom, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? Come on, get real with me. Jesus answered, you say I'm a king. 
To this, then he, he said, you say, that's what you're saying. You're saying I'm a king. Now I want you to watch this. They always tried to make him a natural king of Israel. And he was having none of it. Amen. To this end was I born. And for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. If anyone is of the truth, he hears my voice. What's the truth he's talking about? I'm from somewhere else. Oh, I'm a king, all right. I'm just not from here. You were delivered from, there, there's, there's earthly kingdoms. We can't, we can't deny that. There's sovereign nations, and there's kings still today, and there's all that kind of stuff, and that's just, that's fine, that's just natural. But the kingdoms uh, that are important are, there's a kingdom of darkness, and there's a kingdom of light. There's the kingdom of the devil, and there's the kingdom of God. And people have to choose. Isn't it nice you get to choose? You can't choose your earthly family, but you can choose your spiritual one. You, you, you can't necessarily choose what kingdom you were born into in the earth, but you can choose your spiritual kingdom. And so Jesus answered back to Pilate, and he said, that's what you say I am. That's what you say I am. You say that I'm the king of the Jews, but I've come to the world to bear the truth. In other words, I've come to talk about another kingdom. Um, Jesus went about preaching the kingdom. That's where they got confused. Everything to them was of this earth. And so they began. And there is true truth in some way that he is the king of the Jews, but, but he was never meant to be an earthly king. We're going to get into it just a little bit. Um, in Luke chapter 1, verses 32 and 33, it says, uh, Luke 1, 32, And he shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. So that's a natural kingdom. But it says, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Uh-oh, well, that's a little different. You can't rule forever if you're going to be born and then die. So even in that, he's talking spiritual things. And of his kingdom, there shall never be an end. Kingdoms of this earth, they come and they go. Governments, they come, they go. Presidents, they come, they go. But there is one king who is eternal, immortal. There is one king, and his name is Jesus. One king. Just one. And even the people begin to pick it up in John chapter 1. Nathaniel, uh, he said this, John chapter 1, verse 49. John 1, 49, if angel answered at him and said, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. So they began to pick up this king. That, uh, even when he first met him, he, he was like, okay, you're the rabbi. You are the son of God. I get that. And you're the king of Israel. Because of some things that were said. Jason, after Jesus' resurrection uh, in Acts chapter 17, verse number 7. Jason, uh, he said, whom Jason had received, and, the, the, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar. Who is Caesar? He's a king. Saying, there is another king, one Jesus. In other words, Jason was saying, you all understand there's a natural king, and I get it. His name is Caesar, but that's not who I serve. I serve Jesus the king. I'm from another kingdom. And if you and I don't get our eyes off of what's going on in the kingdoms of this earth, you cannot operate in the kingdom of God. Amen. It's too carnal. It's too natural. It limits you. What are you fighting for? What, 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 what keeps you up at night? Governments? People? What's going on around you? What is your life? It's even a vapor that lasts a little while. Eternity and that king is going to last a really long time. And you've got 80 to 120 years, depending on what you want, to fix, to get it right. And what you and I do down here in this vapor, in this moment, you know, people think they're going to live forever. And you know you're just not. 
And it really doesn't until you get about 60, you think, oh, I'm there. Oh, this is not going to last forever. Did I do what he asked me to do? Did I please my king? I'm going to stand in front of him. I'm going to stand in front of my king as a subject, as a son. And he's going to ask me, did, I, did you do what I asked you to do? No, he didn't ask, did you do what I told you to do? And it's either yay or nay. I don't care if you're 15 years old. Your life is but a vapor. I'm not planning on you going anywhere. But when you th think about it, and the end of all things is at hand. And so we've got to become very kingdom-minded. Amen. Well, don't you care nothing about, you know, where you live and everything? Oh, sure I do. Sure I do. But it's third area or fourth area, fifth area. It's probably for me these days way down on the list. Way down on the list. He's coming soon as the king. I don't want to have to go to classes in heaven and be tutored how to operate in the kingdom of God. I want to figure it out right now. Because it's forever. And you're going to have to figure it out. I don't know what you think we're going to do up there. We're not going to, float, we're not going to get wings and float around up there. We're going to, there's things to do. Everybody say, Jesus is the king. Jesus is the king. Woo, Hallelujah. So they were always, though, trying, they were thinking, and you can't blame them. They weren't born again. Yeah. And so everything to them was natural. Are you kidding me? Jesus shows up, the Lamb of God, the one who was prophesied, and he begins to minister, and there's an anointing on him, you know? And all these things begin to happen, and, you know, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Uh, Nathaniel, you're the king. You're the king. I get it. You're the king. This is all new. And so even, you know, the people as Jesus ministered, as he's ministering about the kingdom of God, these people are not born again. There's nothing on the inside of them. The Holy Ghost is not leading them. So they're hearing all this, and, it's, and it's, it opposes what they thought was going to happen. Because in John chapter 6, 15, it says, When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king. So what was wrong with him making him a king? He wasn't here to rule over Israel. A natural king. How many you know at that time, thing, things were a mess. Rome was putting the hammer to them, overtaxing them. Their tax dollars were not coming back to help them. They were mad morning, noon, and night. The tax collectors were cheating them, getting rich. Those politicians are getting rich. And the regular people, you know, there's tumult everywhere around them. They don't have any representation. They're mad. They're tired. They're tired of being run over. And they're going to rise up. And they, Oh, here comes Jesus. And Jesus, ooh, you be the king. If that's you, it says, you know, the government's going to be on your shoulders. Come on, put it up on your shoulders and let's, let's get rid of these people and you take over and make my life better. Isaiah 9, 6, this is where they got it. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders. But it's not an earthly government. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. <laughs> I love one of the first things. This is real. The, uh, the apostles were real. They're tired of what's going on in their life. And soon as Jesus is raised from the dead, one of their very first questions, Acts chapter 1, verse 6. He, they looking down, the apostles looking down, they get us right now. They're, they were tired. They were tired of the government. They were tired of this. They were tired. But tired is not, a, I remember, the Lord tells me this all the time. Mark, tired is not a strategy. But they said this, Acts chapter 1. I mean, here, what's going on in Acts chapter 1? I mean, uh, the Holy Ghost is about to be poured out. Jesus, the king, has been raised from the dead. Everybody's excited. Are you excited? He went and talked to 500 people and 120 people show up. Hallelujah. So not everybody's excited, but most everybody's. I mean, there's a, there's a fifth of them that are excited. Hallelujah. And so they're waiting around. And so they want to talk to him. Remember, he said, you got to go to Jerusalem. Uh, John baptizes water, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, hallelujah. 
And then verse 6, when they therefore were come together, they said, Lord, are you going to fix the kingdom right now? Is this the time you're going to fix the government? Because it needs fixed. And he said, let me get right on that. He said, it's my highest priority for your comfort. So you can have it just the way you want it. Because you think when it's just the way you want it, everything's going to be all right. And you'd be a fool. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons. There's that word seasons. Which the Father has put in his own power. But all you need to understand right now is that you shall receive power. What did he just say to them? Grow up. Get over yourself and get some power. Amen. Grow up. Get over it. I ain't fixing no government today. Well, Pastor Mark, I don't like this. I don't care. Doesn't the Lord care? He absolutely cares. But it comes from ruling and reigning in this life by one. Oh, ruling and reigning. That's kingdom talk. You've got to rule and reign from a kingdom to affect another lower kingdom. What did he say? I get it, but this is really what you need. I get it. You want me to fix it, but this is really what you need. Everybody say, I'll receive power, I'll receive power. After, the after the Holy Ghost has come upon me. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to be a witness. Uh-huh. Where? Well, I'm going to go out into Jerusalem. I'm going to go to Madison and Huntsville. Amen. And then I'm going to go to Judea. I'm going to go to Alabama and Tennessee and maybe some Mississippi. And Georgia needs some help. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, um, and, and all of Samaria, all the whole United States. And then I'm going to go to every country the Lord sends me, and I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to be a witness, but after I get the power of the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to take to them the kingdom of God that will change their life and change everything that's going on around them. And that's what we're supposed to do. Everybody say, I'll receive power. So, so Jesus came back, and man, they wanted him to fix the kingdom. And, and again, don't go out of here and say, well, Pastor Mark said God doesn't care about our, you know, the United States. That's not what I said. He does care. It's just not as high a priority as some people are making it to be That's today. Right, amen. Listen to me. I go to, we go to countries where there is, in the natural, no hope for them based on their government. Yet the church is thriving. I know you don't like this, but the church really does the best during persecution. Oh, that's a subject for another day that you don't want to talk about. Because our current uh, gospel sometimes is all God, uh, God's got it and everything's always perfect. And God's got it. And if it's not 100%, then it's not God. God, And it's true, God's good and God's wonderful. But there are some times that he didn't promise you you would never have any persecution. That's right, amen. And if you don't do what he wants, I mean, they were supposed to go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria. And, and then persecution came, and that's finally when they went. Lord, help me stay on the king stuff. Hallelujah. There say, glory to the king. Glory to the king. Hallelujah. So they tried to make him an earthly king. And again, I'm not saying that uh, Jesus doesn't care about the kingdoms of the world. He surely does. But he doesn't necessarily have to fix them like you and I think he has to fix them. And I did include me in there. I did include me in there. I care about stuff. But I've had to learn during this season to place my faith in the right place. And really one of it is what I'm learning about this, what I'm understanding getting revelation of, is the more kingdom-minded I am, the more that I trust my king and more I understand I'm a subject, I'm, I'm part of a kingdom. And this king really takes care of his peoples. And that's what kingdom I'm from. I've been delivered out of this natural kingdom. And so there are going to be a lot of things going around, around you in the natural, but it doesn't have to touch your business. It doesn't have to touch your family. Amen. Amen. Why? Because I'm from another kingdom. 
Even Goshen was another kingdom within a kingdom because they were covenant people. That's what was going on there. The kingdom, you could say, in the spirit, it became the kingdom of Goshen. Even though naturally the Egyptians would never have told you that was another kingdom. But it was functioning in another kingdom. A people within a people. I'm telling you, if you'll understand that, even things that go on in our nation and around the world, if you're a, a people, if you're the people of God, no matter what goes on with your people as a whole, being a people of God makes you in a whole different category and a whole different place. And whatever goes on with people that look like you, that talk like you, that act like you, if it's happening bad to them, it doesn't have to happen to you because you're from a, you're, you're a different people. You're, you're from another place. Hallelujah. You're from the king. You're, you're a kingdom uh, you're a kingdom of priests. You're from heaven. Amen. I'm tempted sometimes to make you all passports. <laughs> from heaven. I don't know if we can get Jesus to come down and sign it or not. But that would be cool. At the crucifixion. We're going to get some place tonight. John 19. Verse 19, Pilate wrote the title and put it across the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title read, many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was near to the city and written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. He wanted everybody to know, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I'm the king of the Jews. Well, he, uh, he, he never said he was from this earthly kingdom. Pilate answers, I've written what I've written. I like that. So that's what went on when Jesus was here, and even briefly after his resurrection. But I want to talk about this. Who he is today. Hebrews 1 3, who be in the bright, Hebrews 1 3, who be in the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had made, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty. What is majesty? The king, the almighty God. He sat down at the right hand of the, as he is the majesty. Majesty. You remember that old song? Majesty. We worship your majesty. He's the king. Hebrews 12 and 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of God, of the throne of God. Hebrews 12 and 2. He sat down at the right hand of the throne. Who sits on the throne? A king. Psalms 24, 8 through 10. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. You see, our king knows how to fight. I have proof. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Our king won the battle. Our king won the war. Our king is seated. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord strong in battle. Verse 9. Lift up your head, O you gates. Talk about you. Lift them up, you everlasting doors. Did you know you were a door too? And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Y'all need to think about it. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord Jesus is the king of glory. So there's something about knowing him as king that gets you to one of my favorite subjects, the glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 6, 15 out of the New American Standard Bible. It says this in 1 Timothy 6, 15 out of the New American Standard Bible. Which he will bring out in proper time. He who is the blessed and the only sovereign. He's the only sovereign. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of... I hear people try to teach on this and they're talking about, well, he's the King of natural kings. He is not the King of natural kings. He's the King of you, the King. 
He's the Lord of you, the Lord. Well, I don't want to call myself that, but it's okay because he called you that. He is the king. There is only one king, but he made you a kingdom of priests. He also made you to rule and reign in this life as a king. You have authority. Amen. But he is the sovereign. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And then Revelation 19, 16. Woo! Revelation 19, 16. And on his vesture and on his thigh a name was written. On his vesture, on his clothes, and on his thighs written, King of kings, Lord of lords. It's written, King of kings. He, he proudly wears it like a sash. And I'm not giving you the okay to get ink. All right, it says, I, I see you people. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Jesus is the King of kings. Jesus is, Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Lord of Lords. It's important. That's why it's written. That's why he wears it. It's not just important for him. It's important for you. You have a king. You have a king. You have a king. And this king don't mess around. This king knows how to take care of his people. This king is good. This king is gracious. This king is kind. Let this king become more real to you than the kingdoms of this earth. Because if the kingdoms of this earth is natural, it's carnal, it, 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 it's, what you, it's only what you can see, hear, feel, taste, and touch. It's just in this realm. We're just mere men. The Lord's trying to get us to walk through a door and lift up our eyes that we serve a risen Savior. We serve a real king who has a real kingdom. It's all about eternity. And if you and I can learn to walk in that kingdom now, we'll have days of heaven on the earth. You don't got to wait till you get to heaven to have days of heaven on the earth. The kingdom of God is, is supposed to be where you and I live, where we move, where we have our being. We've been translated out of this world and its system and the kingdom of darkness. Darkness, and we've been translated into the kingdom of light Hallelujah. and life where there's a king. I would say, Jesus is, Jesus is my, king. my king. Who do you say he is? Who do you say he is? Who is he to you? Is, do you have revelation of this? And I believe you're going to get more and more. Woo, hallelujah. Revelation eleven fifteen, And the seventh angel sounded, and there was great voices in heaven. The kingdoms of this world, there is a time coming that the kingdoms of this world will become, well, is that now? No, it's not yet. But there's a time coming when the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. His kingdom will have no end. His kingdom will have no end. Hebrews 1.8. There's some angels and they're all talking. Hebrews 1.8. But he said of the son, he said, Your throne, O God, for, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Psalms 145, verse 13. The kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And thy dominion endures through all generation. This is what I sense the Lord's trying to do. Get us back to not being so natural. Don't walk out of here and say, Pastor Mark said, that God don't care anything about the United States of America and all the governments of the world. That's not what I said. I just said there's a priority. And your time is consumed with natural things, then you're going to become natural. And the resolution to your problems can only be natural. But we're not of this earth. Remember in Corinthians when Paul was dealing with them, and he said to them, uh, he had some things to tell them, but he couldn't get it to them. Now, this was a Holy Ghost church. These were tongue-talking folk. They had so much tongue, they had to put it in order. They had so many gifts and manifestations of the Spirit, they had to put them in order. These were the holy rollers of their day. This was the cornerstone. <laughs> no, this, was, this was that group of folk. 
right? That's, this is a Holy Ghost church. But you know what Paul had to say to them? I can only talk to you like mere men. What does that mean? You're just carnal. You know, some things going on, and I, I'm telling myself to all my friends, and I told myself to you, I was just so pleased with myself lately about some things going on. And I was talking about if you want to change the United States, you know, that we have to get people born again. And, uh, you know, if you really want to change this place, you know, the truth of the matter is, Barna says 38% of Americans are uh, born again. 60% say they're evangelical, but evangelical doesn't mean born again. If you know you're born again, you're born again. Amen. So if 38% are born again, it's no wonder that the place is in a mess. Because that means 62% is not. 62% don't think right, don't talk right, don't act right. They're just carnal. They're just natural. That's who they are. So I've been, you know, telling them, you know, we got to get people born again. If you want to change things, you got to get people born again. And the Lord, one time in prayer, he said, I have to be careful sometimes when I get in prayer, especially having my own private time, because then I pray things out in front of everybody, and then I get, like, he'll give me a spanking in front of everybody. Because he's got me, and I get in deep, and so he's like, okay, this is when I got, this is where you're getting it. So, uh, so he said to me, you're so carnal. He talked to me. He said, you're so carnal. He said, you don't care about them. He said, you, you just care about you, and you want things better for you. He said, Mark, this is heaven or hell. Those people are more valuable than your government being okay. He said, what you're talking about is a byproduct. But he said, it's not your chief goal. Is let's get these people born again so I can have a better life. He'd actually like for me to care about them. And their eternity. So I was like, okay, I got it. Jesus was moved with compassion. Because they were sheep without a shepherd. God knows every one of their names. And how you and I can help them, you don't maybe think this, but make him king. Begin to operate in the kingdom of God like never before. Begin to operate like never before. And that last song, the reason I wanted to do that is because a love for your king, where you truly see Jesus as king and you love him as king, there's something that will change for you. So for you, there's all kinds of stuff behind that door Pastor Rhonda gave us this morning. It's a double door. There's good things behind there. But one of the main things is seeing Jesus for who he really is. The devil and demons have been trying to keep you out. I get it. Uh, that same prayer that she was talking about, I, I do something sometimes when I pray in the spirit, dealing with demons. Um, I have never had it. I've been doing this for 30 plus years. I've never been so intent and my prayer language and dealing with, and when I was doing it, I could see, uh, uh, you know, not to make anybody afraid or anything, but I could just see demons grabbing a hold of people's minds and pulling them and holding them. And then I got to a place of breakthrough where I saw that there is, if you'll believe it, there is nothing and no one. There is no demon big enough. I don't care if a principality or two of them come. I don't care if the highest order comes to try to keep you out. You have a name that's above every name. And if you'll do what was said and we're praying for you, you can submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. And those things got to move because you got to go through the door. And there's always going to be doors to go through. This is not the only door. There's going to be multiple doors in your life and choices that you make. But one of the things the Lord, you know, I hope you're getting a hold of this. And I just believe it's going to be further revelation. Jesus is your king. And as a king, he wants to take good care of you. Hallelujah. He wants to take good care of you. But you've got to see him as your king. Honor him as your king. 